Erev Tov, I'm Stephen Benun. You're watching Israeli News Live. RT News today, along with uh, TASS Russian News, several different news agencies there, brought out the information about and accusing er uh, Erdogan, uh, Egyptians' uh, prime minister or president, whatever you want to call him there, of smuggling oil into the country there. And Russia had some very powerful satellite footage there, not satellite, but uh, drone footage there, where they have been watching and they have noticed that there are three distinct routes coming from Syria, from ISIL, uh, the stolen oil from the Syrian country. They're going in free, freely going into uh, the Turkish government there. Of course, as you see here, uh, this is uh, one of the defense, uh, uh, United States defense ministers there that says that no ISIS uh, or, or Egypt is not getting any oil from ISIS. And at the same time, Joe Biden clearly is saying uh, in this footage here that, uh, that, that Egypt has been known to supply arms to ISIS and ISIL forces there to try to topple the Basra Assad regime, which is exactly what the United States had intended on doing to begin with. That was their whole plan. That's why they have worked so closely with Turkey, a NATO ally. Uh, and then one of the Russian journalists there actually confronts um, the, uh, the, the Pentagon spokesperson there, and when she does, they flat out deny that Turkey has had any involvement in, in, in uh, dealing with, with ISIS there. And, uh, and clearly, it's just the opposite. The satellite footage, or the, excuse me, the, um, the drone footage that Russia has produced, the Defense Ministry of Russia, and, and hundreds and hundreds of... Uh, of minutes of footage here showing clearly that yes, they were smuggling oil in. They're not being stopped at the border. That's what the, the drone is able to show is that these oil trucks loaded from the, the place where they get the oil at are going in thousands of trucks, not just one or two or a dozen or so, but more than a thousand trucks leaving these facilities going into Turkey totally unabated. You see that in your screen. They're showing this long line of trucks there. And when they get to the border of Turkey, they're not stopped. They're not slowed down or anything. And Russia has been following this very closely with their drones. Uh, they have confirmed it. Erdogan actually said that he would resign as uh, from, from, the, uh, from the Turkish government there as the head of the Turkish state there, if it could be proven. Well, Russia came to that, to that very uh, thing, the conclusion today, they actually put the evidence out there. Now, uh, the United States absolutely refuses to acknowledge the fact when the evidence is plainly there that yes, Turkey is involved in the smuggling of this oil. That's why we say U.S. has turned a blind eye as, as some of the reports that we have shared here in the past week here uh, to the smuggling of the oil. And also in one of the Israeli news presses today came out saying that a Jewish businessman from Greece actually is one of the middlemen and buying this oil as well from Turkey and turn around and selling it back to Israel. So Israel ends up being a big consumer. Germany is a consumer. Other EU nations are consumers of this $15 to $18 a barrel oil uh, or the sale of this oil there. And uh, it's funny how that the U.S., uh, in fact, this particular uh, State Department uh, man there states that uh, we stand by our ally who has been an excellent partner with us here in the Middle East. And to beat all, well, guess what else is going on? Got some more information to let you know there. Uh, and that is that according to Sputnik News there, and of course even some news coming out of Britain, Brit the British Parliament has now voted to, to bring Britain into the campaign with the United States and France to bomb different ISIL targets there in the Middle East. I told you guys when this whole issue came up with Paris, this was to justify to get boots on the ground. The U.S. and NATO, their allies, are not going to sit back and allow Russia to take over this whole area. They're going to fight to get control of it. And it's only a matter of time before Russia and Turkey go head to head. I can only imagine that is, 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 is imminent, no doubt. Uh, you know, I can't say that it's an absolute that it will happen, but it does clearly seem to be uh, definitely something that is about to take place. They could very well go into some serious skirmishes there. Uh, we know that uh, yesterday that the Turkish had blocked the, the strait going through to block Russian ships. Whether or not that's still ongoing, I haven't been able to follow up on that or not. And then we have another interesting news that just came out as well. 
We find out that Russia is loaning $25 billion for a nuclear plant to be constructed in Egypt. Now that to me is just not the smartest thing that Russia has done here lately. Because if you think about it, what would, that, what would end up happening there? We know that uh, Egypt was very much known since World War I to be one of, the, one of the few countries that have ever actually used uh, chemical weapons on their enemies. They did in Yemen back in 1961. Gotama Ir was very concerned back in 65 that they would use the, the gases. If they used them on the Yemenis, they would actually use them on Israel as well. And it wasn't until 1967, uh, the Six Days War there, that kind of helped put a little bit of a slowdown to that process. Now, also in 1954, the Egyptians actually wanted to, uh, or had actually started a nuclear program. And it was actually a, nut, a Russian nuclear reactor that they were using to try to get this program started. Because why? They want a nuclear bomb like the rest of the world has. And, uh, but then again, I see what's going on here for the, the Russians giving them a $25 billion loan to build a nuclear power plant along with the scientists, etc. It is obvious, one, Russia is very smart economically to build themselves some good economic friends in the region to, to strengthen up the economy of the Russian ruble as well as their building allies globally. He is, Vladimir Putin, very intelligent man, is definitely splitting the economical globe and the US dollar will no longer be the world currency's reserve currency. We can see that that is definitely coming to the last days with no, no doubt about it. Anyway, that's just kind of a little recap of what's going on. We did hear about, as you guys I'm sure are getting filled with the news in the United States, about 14 people that were killed in California. Uh, three terrorists that entered into a facility there. One gunman was killed. One has escaped from what I understand there, uh, but a very high loss of life in the United States. In fact, from what we've seen on the statistics, it's been the, there's been 351 attacks in the United States this year alone where a, a minimum of four or more people were, ki were killed in those attacks. Uh, very sad, our condolences and our, our prayers sincerely go to the families that have lost loved ones in this case here. And I can only imagine these are things that are going to be done that will help lock down the United States in the near future to bring about that martial law. In fact, in the aerial footage that we saw uh, thus far, between the, the police cars, you see several military vehicles as well. Uh, that's uh, military personnel carriers. We do see people dressed in full military uh, uniforms as well coming on the scene there in California. So there's, there's, there's two sides to this. One, our, our concern and our love for those that have lost loved ones in this particular attack. And yet at the same time, what does it say for America's future? I'm Stephen Benoon. You've been watching Israeli News Live. Shalom and good afternoon.